Hey guys, welcome to day 129 of my carnivore journey. And man, it just feels like it was day 128 a few minutes ago. Oh, that's because it was. I recorded the video a few minutes ago. <laughs> so, but guys, welcome to day 129. I wanted to try to have a video for every single day. That way, again, if somebody's out there and they want to follow each and every day what I ate, how I felt, I wanted to have that available. So I don't want to skip days. Even if I miss a day filming, I want to make it up so people can find day 128. Anyways, welcome to day 129. Guys, um, today I had my one pounder, so that's why I'm probably not going to have a picture of it because it's my one pounder. You guys know it by now. If you don't know what my one pounder is, go back into just a few probably previous videos <laughs> And you'll find my one pounder. There's a few variants to it, but I mostly have it down to a science. Um, but for lunch, I had two hot dogs. The reason why I've been having two hot dogs for lunch lately is because I have to boil some eggs. I Normally, I have a bunch of hard-boiled eggs. I like to take two eggs for lunch. Instead, I've been having to go buy this one gas station um, where they have these beef hot dogs. They're like higher quality beef hot dogs versus just the normal garbage dogs. Um, so whenever I'm near there, I was like, well, I'm by there again and I'm going to need some kind of lunch because I, I was starting to get hungry. I'll go ahead, get those two hot dogs. And then for dinner, I have my one pounder. My one pounder, I didn't have any Tabasco in it. I've been, I've been actually omitting the Tabasco, uh, these last few burgers, and, and the burgers are still great. Um, and I actually didn't use any hot sauce toward the end either. I ate the one pound burger all the way through. Um, so I had one pound of meat and it was 73.27 and, you know, I cooked it with about, you know, four or five tablespoons of butter. But, you know, as far as what I actually ate and absorbed of butter, probably a few tablespoons. Um, other than that, that's what I ate and how I feel. Um, now... I guess just for a little bit of um, carnivore talk, uh, guys, I do want to talk about um, some deep-seated habits. You know, I want to remind some of you, because again, some of this I covered before, but again, some of you are, are new and you're looking for new words of inspiration and, and, and guidance. And even though I would say go back and watch my previous videos, realistically, you're probably not... Um, there is a lot of information in those. So I, like I said, I will be repeating myself and some of you need to hear it again. So before some of you tune out and say, oh, Josh is going to talk about something I probably already heard. It might be something you might need to hear again. And that is deep seated habits. So, you know, smells are great memory triggers. Um, visuals, of course, obviously, and memories like association. So, and, and the reason why I bring this up is because when I was um, picking up like meat, um, and by the way, I got a, a three pound chub for like 10 bucks of 7327. So that's like three days of meals for me for like 10 bucks. So that, that was like, it was on sale at the store. So that's why I said, if you find those sales, anyways, so I was at the store. And as I was walking from the meat section, I had to kind of go around over and get some more heavy cream for my coffee. Um, and um, I was cutting up the, uh, after I got the heavy cream, there was like the refrigerator freezer section. And as I was walking up there, I just happened to look over and there was a box of frozen White Castles. Right now for if for some of you Northerners, you probably know what White Castle is. Some of you Southerners, maybe not. Maybe you're familiar with crystals. Um, but they're the little square sliders, right? Little hamburger sliders, the small ones. Um, and so, look, there was fond memories with, the, with White Castle in general. Obviously, when I was younger, I grew up in Michigan. Um, I grew up near Detroit, but there's, there's, there's fond memories of White Castle in that sense. But what I mean by also fond memories is like, there was these fun times that we would have as a family, like me and my wife and son, 
And we would just have those nights where we would buy the frozen box case of White Castle from the store now because they, they sell them in frozen in the store. And the, I remember down living in the South, you could never get a White Castle. But when they started carrying them in the stores, it was like, oh, my God. Because crystals and White Castles, look, I got to give the edge to White Castle. Sorry. In fact, the crystals in our area went out of business. Anyways, um, so with that, like what I was saying is when I was passing by, I saw that case. And for a split second, I was like, dude, that sounds so good right now. I'd love to have a White Castle night. Because, again, it was a, a memory that was a good memory where it was a fun thing. Like me, it, it would be a fun night where me and my wife and son were like, hey, let's do like a you know White Castle slider night or something, you know, maybe watch a movie, whatever. And, and that's what I'm saying. It's like it was there was there was memories attached to it, not just a craving or not just a thing, but like memories and and wanting to relive uh, good memories, those type of things. You know what I mean? So I wanted to cover that. I don't think a lot of people like to go in detail about cravings. I see a lot of people on a lot of channels, they'll just be like, oh, the cravings have gone away. And they, and they sort of, I don't know if it's because they want you to move past it mentally, sort of. They don't want to dwell on it. But you guys know me. I'm going to keep it real, <laughs> right? I'm going to tell you. And even at day 129, like, there's still those things. And I want to identify them so that way when you guys experience it, you can be like, yeah, I know exactly what he's talking about. And or maybe maybe you are doing good with your cravings. And then one day it'll hit you like like it hit me where you're going to go. Oh, man, that's what Josh was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I had good memories of this and I and I want it right now. Holy crap. But what I want you to also remember is that I'm telling you, stay strong, you know, stay strong. Keep up your carnivore. Guys, get away from sugar, artificial sugar, artificial sweetener. I'm telling you, try to get, try to clean up your carnivore as much as you can. I, I'm telling you, um, it, it it really does help when you get away from and you cold turkey sugar and artificial sugar, any any form of sugar, no matter what you think it is, any form of sugar, none of it's really that good. Anyways, um. I don't want to preach. I just wanted to say, hey, recognize those those feelings. And it's okay to feel that. You know, I don't have regrets in a way. Like, I mean, yes, there was a part of me that's like, I always wonder, like, well, what if I became a carnivore as a teenager or from being a kid or something? Like, how would I be as an adult? Would I be? healthier like what's the long term really like um i mean we have some people like like maggie from canada and stuff the rancher the 85 year old rancher whatever i think she's 85 like the but she's in her 80s you know she looks amazing you know that kind of thing so but at the same time like nobody really knew uh not a lot of people knew um what it was really like we all a majority of people were following the recommendations we all trusted in these big organizations that sounded fancy. They seemed like they were going to have. And, and I think what also led to that is that back then in the seventies and eighties and all these things, when, when all this stuff was coming out, we were also having some big innovations from like, and, and, and a lot of things happening with um, the NASA. And I'm not talking about like the challenger accident that was, completely unfortunate but there was like a lot of things happening in the space program and just technology cell phones were taking these massive like leaps the home computer so our trust in scientists and and professionals like like innovation we considered american heart association and all these other places like the top rung of the medical tiers we didn't know what we know now and so we believed in that, you know, I swear, it's almost like I wish I could just sue these people for my and, and be like, hey, you misled me 
I mean, it'd almost be like an America versus the industry lawsuit, like some kind of big class action lawsuit. You know what I mean? Like, hey, you, like when that one person sued McDonald's for making them fat. Although I do understand we have a choice, blah, blah, blah. But in this case, you know, they mis they lied to us. They misled us. And I would love to be able to do that. Anyways, not going to get on that more of a tangent. Uh, we are, you know, getting over 10 minutes already. I just want to say, hey, guys, um, another good day. Feel really good. A couple hot dogs, but one pounder. Um and of course, I'm gonna have my coffee. I've got it. Actually, I don't have it right next to me this time. Actually, it's it's in the other room. It, it just got I just brewed it and I left it on the counter. So, which is it's cooling down anyway. So I have to at least cool it down a little bit. Oh, and I got a small confession. I, I saved it for the end. So, I did. I did step on the scale today. Because I just was like, I felt like I was kind of stalling out a little bit. And you guys know, I got down to 268. I was like three pounds away from hitting my goal of 265. Um, my long, my goal now at, one, at day 180 is now I had to adjust it to 250. But 265 was that benchmark. And... Um, I will say, though, I did step on the scale today in the evening, which they always tell you to weigh yourself in the morning. So, but I weighed myself um, before my shower, and I was at 263 point something. I don't remember what the point was because I wasn't officially weighing myself. I saw it stabilize at 263, and I'm like, ah, and I jumped off the scale. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> so... Spoiler alert, since, you know, eight days ago or nine days ago, since day 120, seems like I've lost another five pounds. But that would put me on course. Like, I, I would be on track for that pacing. So it makes sense. And I'm probably going to gain a little bit because that was also before I ate dinner. And, you know, I mean, it's going to fluctuate. But it's, it seems like I'm still on a good pace. So I'm just letting you guys know. Yes, your boy's losing weight, and I actually did achieve that 265 benchmark, but I'm not going to, I don't want to be official until, was it day 150? That's like the official weigh-in and measurements again. So, anyways, guys, we will see you tomorrow for day 130, man. Oh, time. Time goes so quick. All right, guys. Love you guys. Bye.